sing a song in my favorite key. Welcome to love. Well, I'm here with performing artist and CEO of Soul Artistry, Yolanda Lavender. You also served as the executive director for the Black Arts and Cultural Center, right? Mm -hmm. So in your time there, what did you learn and what did you kind of want to change or, or improve? I learned so much uh, during my time as the executive director at BACC. I had a lot of personal growth there. I always think about it now as my incubator space to develop myself as an executive, as a person that really is like leading in the art space, not only in Kalamazoo, which that appointment at BACC provided me the opportunity to branch out more outside of Kalamazoo. So I'm, I'm so grateful for that. But I really learned a lot Lot about the importance of spaces for BIPOC artists in communities and the need for that. And so that really has propelled me to a lot of the things that I'm doing now. Do you remember when you, you came up with the idea to create Soul Artistry? Oh my goodness, I do remember the exact moment. It really came out of a need, which a lot of black and brown creatives are often developing and building the opportunities that they want and need that are not there for them. I remember when I was first starting out in Kalamazoo because I was not in the school of music at Western or like connected to any event venues in the community um, that I had a hard time with being able to, you know, have spaces to perform and, and showcase outside of Fire Historical and Cultural Arts Collaborative, which is the first place that I performed outside of church, which is where I got my start when I was five years old. And so it developed into more than just let me create a showcase for myself. And I, my first album is called Soul Artistry. And I was like, hmm, this could, you know, maybe be like the brand or the thing. <laughs> um, so yeah, it just has continued to snowball from there. And now we're doing, you know, so many things that again, I just am so, so grateful for. And I think you do something called um, the Featured Artist of the Month, right? The Featured Visual Artist each month in the space in Kalamazoo, which is super intentional to make sure that there's opportunities for artists to be able to showcase their creativity, but also being compensated is super important for me and the entire premise of soul artistry. When you're looking to curate a show, what are some of the things that you look for? I'm looking for the artist who normally does not have the opportunity um, the artist that is amazing and talented that no one knows about. I'm intentionally looking for Black artists, artists of color, artists who have historically been excluded from opportunities. I'm looking for someone who is like nervous or shy about like, oh, I don't really know if I want people to see or hear, you know, my stuff yet. Those are all the artists that I'm looking for because again, I, I was that artist. It's interesting because you go from this five-year-old singing in church and then you become a national recording artist how does that happen when you're in kalamazoo <laughs> Exactly. That's a good question. I think God was like, yep, you're going to be in Kalamazoo and you still will open for Erica Badu and be on the same <laughs> stage as the Spinners yeah. and in Vogue, all of these people. And a, a lot of those experiences were when they came to Kalamazoo. So it wasn't even that I, oh, you wow. know, was like going They came out. to you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> which is like, you know, I'm just grateful because that's the way that, you know, I've been able to live life. And, you know, what I love about you is that you know, with soul artistry, you're always looking to help other artists, mm -hmm. right? In some way possible. Yeah, very, very important again, because I'm always thinking about like what what did I need that I didn't have when I was first getting started and coming up? So yeah, someone would have been like, listen, I know that $25 seems like a lot to you to come and sing, you know, a couple songs, but here's what you know, what that looks like and what you should be asking for over time and yeah. consider like how much time you rehearsed and you know, what you had to prepare, all of that. So if someone, you know, would have been able to get to me sooner and help me understand that, then, you know, who knows what the outcome would have been. So the business of artistry is really important for me to at least share the basics of that. Sometimes feel like I'm an anomaly because I, 
am a true creative, but I also have a deep passion for like right. the business side um, of the artistry. And so I always want to alleviate that from other artists who are like, no, I just want to paint. I just want to sing, write the poetry. I don't want to worry about, you know, that side of it. And so I want to be able to assist them uh, with taking that part on so that they can just be able to have the space to be able to create. How do you figure out what your value is? So what I normally tell folks is like, Think about the different stages and process that has gotten you to the point that you're at now. Like, did you take some classes? Did you go to school for this? Like, you got to consider all of that. And then look around at other artists and creatives who are doing similar or like things to what you're doing. And what are they getting paid? How much are they able to, you know, negotiate and bring in? Um, so that gives you an idea of like, oh yeah, I got to bump this up a little bit. Self-care mm -hmm. is super important, right? How, yes. Describe what that looks like. It looks like me <laughs> being comfortable with telling people no. Right. It looks like me recognizing what it is that I'm sacrificing by not telling people no or by continuing to push myself and just go when I know I have nothing mm -hmm. left to give. It looks like me understanding that rest is resistance. It looks like me being okay, even though people might not understand it. And then also I I want my experience as a creative of going from like this little girl who was five years old singing in church to leading this awesome company that has several clients and is doing, is running like an art gallery and has all of these, you know, different opportunities. Like the, the process and journey from that five-year-old, you know, little girl to who I am and what I'm doing now was not an overnight thing. And I had to like keep, you know, reinventing and figuring out what works best next and, you know, how to do things differently, who to say yes to, who to say no to. But I want folks to know that I'm open to sharing what that process and experience was. So like, hit me up, ask me, like, I'm, you know, willing to, to share all of that because it's important to me that I'm not the only one that I'm not the only one, but that I'm, you know, bringing other people in, pulling them up, making sure that they have um, the opportunities as well. Sometimes you don't see it when you're in it, but I think yeah. soul artistry is already doing that, you know? Oh, wow. it's, it's, it's getting bigger and better. Yolanda, it's always fun talking to you and find out what you're doing. Yes. Thanks again so much for the conversation today. Thank you. Support for Kalamazoo Lively Arts is provided by the Irving S. Gilmore Foundation helping to build and enrich the cultural life of greater Kalamazoo.